Welcome back, Typhoon here. Now that we have successfully imported your binary into Ghidra, uh, it is time to begin uh, the most crucial part of reverse engineering, which is the analysis here. In this lecture, we'll explore how Ghidra analyzes binaries, explain what each analysis option does, and truly break down the code browser interface so you can confidently interpret and manipulate the results. We'll click on the Hello world at exe you can see in the launch launching tool and once you import a binary Ghidra prompts with the question hello world has not been analyzed would you like to analyze it now I always say yes uh, this is where Ghidra begins to shine and this analysis process in Ghidra is not just a background tasks uh, it's a critical step that automatically identifies uh, the functions and their calling conventions, function parameters and stack variables, strings and constants, control flow structures, uh, cross references between functions and memory locations. Now, with this analysis uh, option windows appear, you will see the long list uh, of analysis modules, each one responsible for a specific type of analysis uh, such as instruction decoding, uh, like the uh, data references and the uh, symbol references and symbol recovery and so on and so forth. Now you can enable or disable individual um, analyzers. If you can see, we have disabled the function start search after code analyzer. And it also has description here. Now you can click on any analyzer. We'll enable it right now. So we can click on any analyzer and um, you, you see a detailed description in the upper right section of the dialog. And yeah, it also has the, uh, we can also configure the advanced options uh, such as heuristic behaviors like the uh, create local variables create param variables, using function stack analysis, and so forth and so forth. So every analyzer has description and has its own options. Now, if you're not just getting started, the default configuration is safe and effective here. You, know, you don't need to change that. But however, understanding these modules uh, allows you to tailor Ghidra's analysis to suit specific binaries. Now, for example, stripping symbols in a malware or non-standard calling conventions in an embedded firmware will definitely help you. And once satisfied, click the Analyze to begin. Now, you will now be redirected to code browser interface. You can see in the loading file, uh, loading here is loading. I can, I can make me smaller right now. Yeah, because I will use the almost whole window here. Now, uh, you may ask, what if I have, like, forgot something when in the analysis and analyzer uh, page? Now, you can by um, rerun anytime navigating to analysis, auto analyze hello world attacks so in this case. And you can see the same pane just appeared. So don't worry about that. And after analysis, Ghidra launches this code browser. Your primary interface for exploring and interacting with binaries. Now at first glance, the interface might seem overwhelming, but every component is worth a reason. Now let's talk you through each part of uh, the layout here. Now, at first, we have the disassembly view. Uh, this is our world. Now, this is your command center for raw machine level insights. The disassembler shows instruction level output, letting you follow the program's logic exactly as the processor is executed. We also have comments here. And at the right side, we have the, the compiler window, which is one of the Ghidra's standard features. Now, this window provides high-level 
of the sea life to the code generated for this assembly. Now, you may notice something weird here. It is synced with the disassembly window. So, selecting an instruction 1 will highlight its counterpart in the other. This is all good, right? So, this view is essential for uh, simplifying complex assembly logic. At the left side, we have program, symbol, and data type management trees. Now, program tree, we have uh, this panel organizes the memory layout of your binary. Sections like text, data, R data, and others are shown here. Now, use it to quickly jump into code and data set. See the lines here. Yeah. DSS and so on so forth. We will learn more in depth in the next lecture, so don't worry about it. We have the symbols tree as well. So we have I have back pain here. So we have a symbols tree here as well. This is a hierarchical listing of all symbols recognized in the binary. Including functions, imports, labels, and namespaces, also classes. It helps you to locate specific code artifacts, such as imported application program interfaces or global variables. STR LAN, POTS, right. That makes sense with the considering that our code is just and, and we have data type manager at the bottom of the simple tree. Now data type manager allows you to manage and define the data types like structures, uh, enumeration types, type types, and units. Now these types can then be applied to uh, memory regions or variables for clearer analysis. And here, this here is our script console and group one. This panel here houses two features. Yeah, houses two features. The first is it acts as a script console, which uh, where Python or Java scripts run. Now, not JavaScript, not JavaScript here, it is a Java and script, not a JavaScript. It has nothing to do with reverse engineering. <laughs> and, uh, book, it also has the function of book, bookmarks count, uh, which lets you mark the address or the name, color or category, which is quite useful back to the malware behaviors or return policy function. And at here, also, I want to get this pen so I can explain it better. Should we get here? So here, we have the current address field. Yes, correct. Yeah, this is our current address field, which uh, displays the address of the current selected instruction or byte. You see it changes here when we press. We also have another, which is another, yeah. Now this is current function. You can see it changes every time we go to different functions here. You can see go here, get the arguments. And also here we'll use much like this. And here uh, you are seeing 
the instruction contacts. Now, if we go to here, like, uh, which shows that complete instruction line, including others in Monix, like Jim D. Ward, pointer, and some others here. Then the Picasso shows operators and references as well. Basically, the instruction context here. Now, this field is context sensitive and updates dynamically as other uh, here as well. And uh, lastly, we have the main toolbar. Which is uh, basically your our classic drop down menu bar you know, with access to our Hydra models, and, uh, file operations, uh, edit tools, analysis, and settings uh, like we also uh, have understood in the previous of our uh, lectures in the beginning. Like it also has a search utility, we can search for the string tool in this uh, case, and you can see other DOS, but I am sure we have something called Hello World because, as you remember, we have Hello World this thing. Or you can also filter it Hello, and here we are. We found the string that we have used. And uh, yeah, that's uh, basically it. So we also have the toolbar which provides one access to familiar tools such as the navigation, commons and data type changes and search utilities. But we can also use the query from there in the new tab. Now together uh, these components form the complete analysis environment and the more comfortable you become with navigating and organizing these things, the more efficient your reversing your workflow will be. Now, in the next lecture, we will go beyond the default layout and learn how to customize the code folder for specific workflows, including scripting support, plugin interaction, configuration, and layout. Now, thank you for watching. I'm Pete and I will see you in the next lecture.